Hey everyone, welcome back. We have picked up the final Tenet weapon, the Psychron. Now hear me out. I was honestly expecting something else. This weapon is... I don't know how to explain it. It's not bad, but it performed different than I expected. We have two Psychrons today with three different builds, but we're actually going to talk about four of them. This is mostly because of similarities between some of the Psychrons. We'll also do a little bit of talk between this new beam chaining toy and our classic favorite primer, the Kuva Nucor. Where does Psychron currently sit as the newest addition to the Chaining Beam family? Well, it doesn't really compete with the raw chaining power and DPS of something like Amprex, so let's not compare it to primaries like that. Rather, it falls under the same umbrella as Atomos, Nucor, and Gaze. Let's compare this to the Nucor and the raw stats. So what is this thing exactly? Well, it doesn't seem to be fantastic in the crit department, with slightly below average crit chance and crit multiplier. While this does technically mean it's more crit viable than Nucor, these crit stats are not good enough to justify it because even if Psychron can only reach 60% with Prime Pistol Gambit or 84 with Galvanized Crosshairs, this means if you want to reach 100, it still requires even more crit support. While Kuva Nucor has only 7% base crit, Arcane Avenger is on the table and helps both of these weapons immensely. It pushes Kuva Nucor up to 52%, but this weapon has a 5x crit multiplier. Five times. That's nearly triple the crit multiplier of Psychron, and yet Psychron just passes 100% crit slightly with Avenger for a 1.8 crit base multiplier. We're gonna see what we can do with this, but this already suggests that Nucor will surpass it in sheer damage, since Nucor has roughly half the crit chance in a full build, but nearly triple the crit damage. Psychron also has a magazine size of 40, but a fire rate of 12? This actually makes it somewhat awkward, especially because it is a battery weapon. You can't really buff this since it isn't a proper reload, so stuff like Volt Speed, Gauss, Redline, etc. have reduced effects since it only affects part of the quote-unquote reload. Kuva Nucor has a fire rate of 10. A higher fire rate means you can deal more damage, but it also means you burn through your ammo more quickly. At just 40 magazine, you can barely sustain fire for a little over 3 seconds, and that's before fire rate buffs. So if you have any fire rate mods of any kind, well, you're going to be spending a lot of time waiting on that battery. Nucor is also able to take advantage of Synth Mod's holster reload set bonus while Psychron isn't, which significantly extends the lifespan of a magazine as long as you aren't firing literally the entire time with Nucor. Psychron has an 8 1 meter punch through, but this is really only enough to punch through one or maybe two bodies on the main beam at best. It's cute, but it really isn't enough to make that much of a difference. If you want to be able to hit entire crowds by punching through multiple enemies, you're still gonna have to slot Seeker. 1 meter punch through is not much. Psychron also has 40% status. This is good, but Kuva Nukra has 50. So what exactly is this supposed to accomplish? It has worse crit and status. It also has worse economy. In exchange for being a battery, but the battery is also small, there are a few things I do want to try on this weapon, but from a base starting point, I can tell you in advance already, it isn't looking too great. As a primer, Psychron is base heat and Nucor is base radiation. That also means Psychron has less priming potential because primary elements will combine with whatever you slot, where secondary element innates remain alone unless you specifically make that combination with your mods again. This means Psychron is losing one element on a primer build, but Nucor also produces the microwave effect, which is a hidden status that counts towards CO and condition overload. So actually, Nucor is two status effects ahead. The difference in base damage is literally one damage point, so I'm going to consider these equal as that is less than 5% damage difference. Also, like, if you want a proper DPS beam, Gaze exists. It can reach 100% crit with just Prime Pistol Gambit, and it has 39% base crit. Yes, 39. It also has a larger battery than Psychron at 43, even with the smallest magazine option available, and has options to go much larger. It's also base radiation and has puncture, so if you use it as a primer with status parts, it would also be ahead of Psychron once again due to proccing two additional statuses just like Nucor. Seriously. So this is just the case of the Psychron trying to play the Jack of All Trades card. There's also Vermi Splicer, but I'm going to skip over that and you'll soon see why. Alright, let's step into the builds. I've been enough of a downer. Today we're going to be comparing Viral Heat, a Corrosive Heat, and surprise, a Gas Electric build. I'm also going to be talking about a variant of the first, a Magnetic Viral Heat Psychron. Let's start with Viral Heat. This is done with the Heat Psychron. Why double stacking heat? Because this is a beam weapon. You can easily max viral stack, so the main objective is to get as much and as big heat procs as possible. As a reminder, I did not take cold or toxin progenitor, because heat takes priority over other elements for innates or kuva elements according to the HCET heat, cold, electric, and toxin hierarchy. If I took cold or toxin, the innate heat would combine with my choice mods first, which defeats the entire point of picking cold or toxin, as I want to make viral heat with a single mod, and I can't do that. This would also mean my viral weight would be too high and surpass heat completely, meaning less heat stacks and wasted viral stacks. 
There are a few issues with this weapon as a DPS. This looks very similar to the Kuva Nucor, except we are actually slotting a crit chance mod, Galvanized Crosshairs, because the weapon can actually use it, but this does cause issues. It means we can't slot Prime T to charge. To fit it, you either have to drop Galvanized Crosshairs, meaning you throw away your crits, or remove Seeker. The weapon does have 1 meter punch through, and I talked about how important it is to have punch through on a weapon that isn't AoE, so long as it doesn't have an AoE component. In theory, this is the slot I would probably drop, but you need to understand this also means you won't hit headshots and crowds as much beyond the first enemy because the chain beams of Cycron's tether to center mass. So let's do that and slap in primed heater charge here. Galvanized multi-shot is self-explanatory. As a beam weapon, you will apply a ton of heat proc, so the prime bane is important since a huge amount of DPS will come from dots. Bane's double dip for dots, so this is an important pick. We have Galvanized Shot next. This weapon only produces two status effects, unlike Nuker, which can easily create four on a DPS build, which gives it a low base damage ceiling, but this still does give 240% base damage, which surpasses Hornet Strike. An extra status pushes us to 102, so even knowing that the base damage bonus is lower on this weapon, we still get more than the OG base damage mods. But that's how Copium, Hornet Strike, and Serration have become these days when the Galvanized mods work. Like I've said, Galvanized Crosshairs will boost crit to 84%, and the cost of beep DPS should be able to proc it quite reliably even on a dot build, because heat does not bypass armor like Slash that can't use Galvanized Crosshairs. Obviously, we pair this with Prime Target Cracker for crit damage and the 60-60 viral mods to get that viral. I've left Pistol Pestilence on rank because we still reach 102% status even without rank 3 and I want to maximize my heat weight since viral will max out to 10 stacks easily. Adding more viral to hit 120% status is not worth the loss of heat weight for heat procs on this build. As a battery weapon, it literally doesn't make sense to run Merciless on a beam. Reload has reduced effects against battery reloads compared to normal magazines as well as stacks fading quickly. We can get headshot kills already since it is a beam and not a slash beam. We also get the headshot multiplier bonus and much longer stack duration. You only need 3 to max it out and each lasts 24 seconds. What I will say is a build like this does not scale into endurance, because deadhead and crosshairs requires raw damage to kill. The further you go into endurance, the more of your damage will come from dots. So unless you're facing unarmored enemies, you will start killing due to stacked heat dots instead of the raw damage of your shots itself. Deadhead and crosshairs require raw damage headshot kills, so for endurance you would run prime pistol gambit and secondary merciless instead, but for base steel path this build can work. That said, it isn't necessarily the best, so let's try it out. Oh yes, there is one last thing to say about this build. I'm running a combat discipline arcane adventure setup. But realistically, that's fine because the main competitor is Nucor, so don't you want to feel how this will perform with similar setups? You don't use Nucor as a DPS without Avenger, do you? This lets Tenet Cycron pass 100% crit chance for consistency. Remember, you always want to stack up galvanized mods and your weapon arcane. So let's go do that. And there we go. That wasn't too bad. So let's spawn them again. You basically always want to aim at the head if you're using deadhead and crosshairs. The chain enemies will die from center mass, but the main target you want headshots for DPS. Alright, they die. It's not bad, right? I mean, technically, since I'm showcasing on Zephyr, you could shoot from in the air for extra crit like this. That made a noticeable difference with a lot more oranges. You could also slap them with the air burst rounds for even more damage. This works much better on Seal Path where there are inflated spawns to stack the augment better. And on top of this, technically you can cast tornadoes and shoot them in to kill them like this. But the thing is, almost anything works with Zephyr's tornadoes. It's low-key one of the most powerful abilities in the game as it turns any single target weapon into AoE. Spreads a ton of status procs, read AoE viral even when you don't shoot, by inheriting elements you shoot into the tornadoes with and multiplies all crits by another final two times. So stop sleeping on Zephyr, people. She went from zero to hero with a rework. It's insane. Anyways, this is not a Zephyr showcase so much as a Cycron comparison, so let's continue on. Zephyr just gives us an example of what Cycron might be able to accomplish with a bit more support. Next up, that Magnetic Viral Heat Cycron. Now, I don't actually have one of these to show you. Basically, you take a Magnetic Cycron to make one of them. Now, why don't I have one? Because you can already infer how it performs based on my Viral Heat Cycron. Magnetic Viral Heat just makes your dots also useful against shields at the same time as health on a single build. But that's just an ease of use build. It's definitely not an optimal DPS build by any means because Cycron actually has damage problems as you can tell from the showcase and makes it even worse than Viral Heat for DPS. 
Taking magnetic, a third element, means you're diluting your heat dots proc further. Not only that, but this means you aren't taking heat as a progenitor, meaning the base heat weight is even lower. You basically both lowered your main DPS weight and increased the non-damaging status weight at the same time. So against flesh, your magnetic viral heat cyclone performs worse than a heat cyclone modded for viral heat. And against shields, your magnetic viral heat cyclone performs worse than the same heat cyclone modded for just magnetic heat instead. It's not worth it. Cycron just doesn't have the DPS required to be able to throw away some for the all-purpose quality of life like this. Now with that cleared up, let's move on to other main builds. This is a Corrosive Heat Cycron. It's the same heat progenitor, just swapping elements to make Corrosive Heat instead of Viral. Why is this a Heat Cycron again? Because like I said earlier, Heat takes priority as an innate or progenitor. So no matter what you pick as the Akuva element, you will not be able to make Corrosive with one mod. You have to manually mod Corrosive and spend two mod slots. Therefore, why not just stick to a Heat Progenitor? It's free CC and some extra armor strip. Also, Heat is good against Flesh, so that's exactly what we did. What was changed on the build? We dropped the 6060 virals for straight up 90 mods to make corrosive. We also don't need prime heater charge anymore and I opted for seeker instead. The Cycron has 28 meter range, so I find this to be quite valuable, especially on steel pads. 3.1 meter punch through will let you hit the down the entire hallway. Now I haven't discussed the Exos much, but my main options I'm thinking on are either Ruinous Extension, which gives an extra 8 meters to the main beam. It does not give this to the chain beams though, which are 5 meters apart, but you will be able to hit out the 36 meters this way. It could come in pretty handy. The other option is Spry Sights, which lets you move 20% faster while aiming. Because this is a deadhead and galvanized crosshairs build, it can be useful for how much time you may spend aiming. ADSing. The rest of the build is the same. You still have a fat amount of status chance, so I'm still sticking with Galvanized Shot for 240% base damage and bonus stacks. As this is a raw damage build, Secondary Deadhead is even better the fifth than the Viral Heat version, as literally all your damage will come from shooting itself to trigger the headshot kills. Let's spawn some victims. This time my Galvanized mods are pre-stacked, and I have Deadhead already up, so let's walk right up to these and shoot him in the face. Well that worked well. Would you look at that? We're barely touching them and they're evaporating. Basically instant death. So for a loadout more focused on base steel path, this significantly outperforms the viral heat build. So much so that it's kinda scary, and you could also bring a melee prime to apply viral, such as Zorus or Contagion. Let's try Zorus today. This is the build I'm running, and this particular Zorus variant is heavily focused on proccing as much viral as possible. It has infinite combo duration, so getting it to 12x grants it about 132% status chance with nearly two-thirds weight towards viral. Volatile rebound makes it bounce around up to four times with a 9 meter radius explosion on each before returning. And last thing, Sting extends procs out to 12.6 seconds. Basically, a decent amount of viral procs. And the first one is the most important, after all. I hold E to throw it, and then shoot my Cycron afterwards. Offloading viral like this makes things a tiny bit clunkier, but significantly increases the damage of your DPS weapon. With how hard this hits, while Corrosive has a limited scaling, I would not be surprised if we could take this up to the high hundreds and around a thousand. Level cap I cannot speak for though, as it still is a raw damage build, but this particular setup, whether with Zorus priming or not, is more than enough for base steel path and appears better than the viral heat setup. And now comes time to look at the eccentric build. This is the second Cycron I farmed. Since it is a gas electric, that means we're going to be running a grouping build. We'll be aiming at heads to start the chain in the crowd. Electric can chain between heads, and gas clouds can also headshot when set up high, so this helps the KPS. We also actually still proc deadhead, so just trust me on this. You'll see it in a bit. The build is near identical to the corrosive heat setup, changing only the two leftmost mods. Unfortunately, you'll see that the gas weight is massively higher than the electric weight. This isn't a good thing because gas is capped to 10 stacks meaning anything after that won't do extra damage, while Electric isn't capped. So while in theory Electric could scale much higher, we now have a problem. While I would love to run this build and this is what I had in mind at first so we can gas Electric with a single mod, I now have to reverse this weighting somehow. This means Sharpened Bullets and Seeker have to go. Luckily Cycron still has some innate punch through, so it can still hit through a bit from the front of the crowd, but you'll still want to wave it around when hitting grouped up enemies. Now we have two dead slots on the weapon. We have fixed the elemental weight issue, but now it's kind of obvious we have also gutted the potential. Basically you want a DBS with a single elemental mod, this only works if the innate element comes last. The absolute best example would be innate electric, like Agendas, but if it was pure electric only instead of being split between IPS and electric. If this impact was also that, you would have 260 electric to a 196.9 heat ratio on this Agendas. It's 52.8% heat, and I could go for a 25% one instead for a 260 electric to a 124.6 gas ratio. Unfortunately, Agendas isn't pure electric innately, and it would only have 140 electric. But this would actually still work extremely well for a group to build as a light attack spam Agendas and would be a real treat for CO since the stance has force slash as well. 
Maybe I'll keep my eyes peeled for that. Anyways, this means on something like the agenda, so you could take progenitor heat and mod toxin to get gas electric with massive weight to electric, or progenitor cold and mod toxin to get viral electric with massive weight to electric. Having Psychron's innate heat take priority over everything, according to the HCET hierarchy, makes it impossible to get any other progenitor element to be the main DPS since their elemental weight won't be high enough. So let's get back to that Psychron gas electric build real quick. This is what we're using. Suboptimal, but that's just the way it's gonna be. Let's try testing this build out, shall we? We need a grouping skill for this to shine, so I'm taking a generic Korra this time with the same combat discipline Arcane Avenger we've been using on Zephyr. Now we got our Galvanize and Deadhead stacks all set up and ready to go. Let's cast and snare, and then we aim at the heads and start shooting. Look at how they die, and pay attention to my buff bar up top. You see that 5 times Galvanize crosshair buff? It's refreshing because I'm still getting headshot kills. The electricity and gas are also headshotting, which also lets it double dip just like the banes on the main enemy you shoot. The headshot multiplier also applies to your main beam, and then the dot is proccing off the head for another multiplier. It can also headshot on the chains, but this will just be a single headshot multiplier since the tether hits from the beam cannot headshot. The main issue I have on this setup though is that it doesn't kill fast enough compared to other builds to justify having to group them up. So let's bring Zorus into the picture again. This works extremely well since the enemies are all bunched up. You basically cast and snare and Zorus them, then shoot heads with the Psychron. See? Noticeable improvement. The build of this Zorus is shown earlier in the video, so if you're skipping to this section, you'll have to check it back there. Although I was expecting a bit more DPS by adding Viral on for extra stacks, this highlights the punch through issue as Psychron is unable to take advantage of the sheer amount of enemies procced with Viral and has limited amount it can kill at once. So it has to sequentially kill the enemies you hit and then change targets after they die. The kill rate is respectable, but it's nothing amazing. On the other hand, if we go on Zephyr again, we can float in the air for the 150% crit chance. This lets us hit 100 14% crit even without a venture from the arsenal once crosshairs is stacked. You add an Avenger and now it climbs to 159. That's more oranges than yellows. It looks pretty, right? And on top of that, you can even add tornadoes. This works extremely well because the tornadoes inherit the elements you shoot into them, and see this? It turns any weapon you shoot into it, whether AoE or single target, into a funnel of 10 meter radius AoE around the eye itself. All it takes is about one second of shooting, and the amount of electric procs and dot just completely annihilates them. This overcomes Psychron's limited target issue by hitting everything at once. The tornadoes are guaranteed to proc status. You can even throw Zorus into it first to make tornadoes it goes viral so it instantly maxes out at 10 stacks. Then channel your Psychron into it. You now get massive AoE, instant max viral stacks, and doubled crit damage. Now you may be wondering why I didn't lead with this. It's because this isn't a Zephyr showcase, and because this isn't good enough to justify building gas electric on Psychron still. Let's go back to the corrosive heat build. Recall how we got similar TTKs without ensnaring at all, and we go with Zephyr's float passive, they die even faster. If we add Zorus in, well, the build was missing Viral before, so it's pretty obvious what will happen even with spread out enemies. And finally, I guess we can try Tornadoes. What I'm trying to say is Tornadoes are busted. They make nearly everything work. Nearly. And if a weapon setup requires Tornadoes to actually make it perform well, then the weapon setup is shit. No, I'm not saying Tornado setups are shit. I'm not taking a dig at Nightmare's recent upload. I'm saying that if we take a gas electric build here that's specifically intended for AoE, and it still kind of underperforms, and then does this with tornadoes, when a single target corrosive heat build manages to accomplish the exact same thing with tornadoes and actually outperforms it without it, then we have a build problem. Gas electric Psychron is usable. It's different and works. But is it better than Corrosive Heat? I wouldn't say so. Despite what the stats for Antenna Psychron might suggest, it remains a standard Corrosive Heat beam for optimal use. Viral Heat might have better scaling, especially for level cap if you're doing disruption, but the ramping is too slow for it to be really viable. You're better off using Corrosive Heat at normal steel path levels, or just using a different weapon for Heat Inherit at level cap. Gas Electric can actually outperform Viral Heat at normal steel path levels, but requires Ensnare to stand up. If you want something Mimi to try it up, you can either take Gas Electric or Viral Heat Psychron, I guess. But I think I think it's pretty obvious at this point that the corrosive heat build pulls ahead in basically all scenarios, or is at least equal. Compared to Kuva Nucor, I expected better. My conclusions are that Tenet Psychron are strictly inferior to Nucor for several reasons. It is very obviously a worse primer, with worse innate elements and status. But as a DPS tool, it in theory had potential to surpass Nucor. But it doesn't, because both DPS builds of Psychron are two status effects behind Nucor, meaning it's missing 240% base damage. Also, Nucor has no problem with massing out viral ticks despite being diluted. Nucor also has much better uptime due to its magazine size and just spends its ammo better with slightly lower fire. Rate. Reload buffs affect Nucor a lot more significantly than Psychron, and Psychron actually wants a mod critical chance, which ironically wastes a mod slot compared to Nucor leaving it free for Avenger due to shit crit chance being compensated by nearly 3 times higher crit damage on the Nucor than the Psychron. The verdict? Halfway to MR fodder. 
Use it if you want, but unfortunately it won't find its way into any of my builds in the future. It looks sick and sounds cool, but that's about it. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you information out always as soon as possible like I'm done with covering the Sisters of Parvels and Plague Star updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm also preparing to get you the info first once more new war info drops. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.